Welcome back to another Mr. Lee Teaches YouTube tutorial and today we're going to continue our series on making educational videos. We started this series with how to make a, a YouTube channel for your classroom or just a channel to host your playlist for your students and now we're going to actually talk about how to create content yourself and either put it on that YouTube channel or even just share it with Google Drive. But we're going to talk about video creation today. Uh, I'm going to hit the high points only. If you want more in depth, tune into my channel, subscribe down here below, and this series is going to be continuing with step-by-step -step instructions a little bit at a time so we can all learn together. Check it out. Okay. So you've decided you want to make some content for YouTube or just video in general for a flipped lesson or for remediation or, or just because you think it's fun. So how do you actually capture content in a video format? Don't worry about editing it yet. Just worry about how are we going to get real life into digital format? And the main ones that I use and the main ones that everybody uses are, are basic webcams. And this is just a Logitech. Um, I believe it's a C910. But I'll put up a link to this one. It's an HD webcam. It's a 1080. Uh, I want to say it's about 50 bucks on Amazon. I've got three of them. Uh, I got one in the, my office that I'm actually recording on right now. I've got one at my office at work. And then I carry one with me because you never know. These are plug and play. You never know when you're going to need a webcam. Uh, I can plug this into a Chromebook. I can plug it into any device that has a USB port and some sort of operating system like a Chromebook, a MacBook, a PC, a laptop, what have you. Uh, these things are invaluable. And you can actually download some free software from Logitech to actually record video straight to it. Uh, there's no editing, there's there's no real features to it, but it will record video or still pictures for you as well. Uh, and that's all free from Logitech, but there's a lot of different webcams out there. And most of our devices have webcams built into them, especially when you're talking about laptops, Chromebooks, and the such. The second thing I use is just a cell phone. Uh, this is my Google Pixel. Uh, it's got an H, a 4K camera on the back and an HD camera on the front. And so a lot of times I'll use the front camera uh, to record myself because HD is really a great video uh, quality, uh, but it's not huge. 4K video makes thing, the files huge and it's really hard for some computers unless they're set up for video processing uh, to handle that 4K from your, from your camera uh, phone cameras uh, that they can do nowadays. And so uh, I'll use just the HD camera. I'll go into the settings and actually change it to where the back camera may be um, HD, <coughs> HD instead of 4K. But being able to see yourself is a huge thing as well. Uh, and speaking of seeing yourself, if I can, there we go. This is one of my main cameras. And sorry, I'll, I'll try to poke out from behind uh, trying to video this. But this is just a Nikon Coolpix. Uh, I picked it up several several years ago it does 1080 hd video um it's not the greatest camera in the world uh, i am by no means endorsing it unless nikon wants to send me one of their newer ones and then i'll put it to use and uh, we'll get some endorsements going but it is a good camera it is a good picture quality it does colors well and it has this flip around viewfinder so i can see myself it's it's very handy to be able to see yourself and what's in frame and what's out of frame when you're doing videos and so I can see when my head's cut off I can come back a little bit so that if I wanted to zoom in digitally like this I can um, but then also uh, getting a simple um, selfie stick or you can get tripod holders for these selfie stick holder thingies phone thingy camera thingies uh, to, to set your camera up and just use your camera like that as well. Um, now, what you are looking at with this big ring is a lighting system. And I'm going to show you something. If you look right there in my eyeball, you can see that circle. And so now that I've shown you that, if you look at other YouTube videos that maybe you want to do something similar or you wonder how they do their videos, you'll know what kind of lighting system they have. Um, if they have one of these ring lights, which is just like the, the mirrors that women will typically use or men 
for makeup because it eliminates your whole face. It also takes some wrinkles out. So um, it's a great lighting system. You can see me clearly. I don't have to worry about tungsten lighting or you know incandescent lighting or anything like that. It's very bright white LEDs. Um, this was not super expensive. It was less than a hundred bucks. Uh, I'll put the link to this also down in the description. Um, but you can also do things like just a little desk lamp with some LED lights. And that's very easy to do as well. Um, and that's what I used for a long time before I spent the money for this ring light. And then one other option you can do, which is more expensive, is digital DSLR cameras or digital SLR cameras. Um, a lot of the newer ones will do video, do HD video. Um, this one is an older one. This is a Canon 40D and I love it. This was my first digital SLR camera and it takes fantastic pictures. Unfortunately, it doesn't do video. And so what I have to do is use my Nikon. But it's super handy to have the Nikon versus this big monstrosity because I can use that Nikon in a, in a selfie stick situation, but trying to hold this camera out, uh, it's got some heft to it. And so um, if you have one that works, then use it by all means. If you don't, don't worry about going out and spending $800 for a brand new digital SLR when you can pick up a couple hundred dollar Nikon or like I said, use your cell phone. Uh, it's probably already paid for or you're making the payments on it and it does great video. It also has image stabilization, video stabilization. Um, it has some great features in it and some cameras will come with some software to do some editing. Um, and I'm gonna talk about editing in just a minute. The final way I'm gonna tell you how to capture content for your video is how I typically do most of my videos. Now this, this video so far has been a lot of me on camera showing you stuff and talking to you, but now we're gonna switch over to screencast. And what I typically do in my videos, my tutorials, is I do screencast. So you can see what's going on on the screen and then you see my face uh, down there in the corner talking to you so you can actually have that, that human aspect quality to it. It's not just my voice over top of a screen. Um, but I use a program called Camtasia. There we go. Um, and, and it lets me, it's done by TechSmith, which also does Snagit. If you ever use Snagit to grab screenshots and things like that. Um, <clears throat> it's a great little software for PC and, and I want to say it costs less than a hundred bucks, maybe 70 bucks. And it's a one-time license. It's not a subscription fee. Um, I also use Screencastify, which is an extension that runs in Chrome. And I can do browser tabs, I can do the desktop, or I can do a webcam only. Um, I can't actually run through the Screencastify right now and show you all of it because I'm screencasting with my Camtasia. Uh, so I have to kind of pick which one I'm going to use. It's like trying to drive a car and then drive another car at the same time. Uh, while technically maybe you could figure out a way to make it possible, uh, computers think, well, if you're screencasting, you're screencasting, and I'm gonna use all my resources for that. I don't need to do it twice. Uh, so I really can't run both at the same time, so I'm not gonna show you the Screencastify, but I will do a tutorial in the future on Screencastify and how to use it. Um, but it is a great free resource. Uh, you can do up to 15 minute videos with Screencastify, and you can do webcam on, webcam off, tab only, screen, uh, your whole desktop. So you can do, if you're using Word or Excel or PowerPoint or some other program, CAD, AutoCAD, um, you can do the screencast with Screencastify extension with Chrome, um, just like you would if it was a web page. And so it's a very handy resource. And if you pay the, I wanna say it's 25 bucks for the pro version uh, a year, then you can do some minor editing with it and you get a few more features with it. Um, you also can lose the, the Screencastify watermark. Another great one to use is iMovie. Uh, iMovie is typically free on your Apple devices. Uh, let me pull up my iPad right here. So not only can I record on my iPad or my iPhone, I can actually make an iMovie video right here and I do all the editing on the iPad itself. Um, and even upload to YouTube from the iPad. And it's just the little star, purple star icon. And um, you know, it's it's you can find plenty of tutorials on how to use iMovie out there on the, on the interwebs. Um, I may do a video on that, I'm not so sure yet. Um, just because it is a very device specific. You have to have an iDevice, an iPhone, an iPad, Mac, iMac, or, or MacBook Air. 
And so uh, I'd rather show things that are ubiquitous and can be used across multiple platforms, which is what I typically show. You can also use other programs like Premiere Pro, and that's by Adobe. And, and Adobe makes great products. I, I love Adobe products. I use Photoshop all the time. I'm actually Adobe certified uh, web design. Um, but Premiere Pro is one of those programs that you can actually make a Steven Spielberg style quality video with. Uh, and it's a little bit much for my purposes. And the learning curve is kind of kind of large when it comes to making videos for YouTube. Now, there's a lot of people out there that use Premiere Pro um, and use it well. I'm just not a video editor. I'm a teacher. I try to work with other teachers and show them how to use all these different tools. And so I don't want to spend the time to get very specific on how to use Premiere Pro well, um, much less proficiently. Programs like Camtasia are much more cookie cutter. Uh, iMovie is very similar to, to Camtasia. Uh, you, you click and drag interface. If you want to draw an arrow, you draw an arrow. Uh, it's very straightforward. With Premiere Pro, um, there's just so many different settings that you can control, it gets overwhelming. That is how I capture my video. That is how I edit my videos is with these different programs. Um, typically, like I said, Camtasia. I have used Screencastify and I have used iMovie before as well. The point of all of this is, is once you get a YouTube channel made for your classroom or figure out how you want to deliver your content to your students or to whoever you're delivering it to, then, then you got to figure out the equipment and don't spend a lot of money. That's what I hate. To, I hate it when people think you've got to spend all this money. I've got this ring light. Well, I've been doing these videos for a while and I thought it was important for me to invest in that. So I spent my money on that ring light. Did I need it? No. Go back and look at my first 50 videos. I did not have a ring light. I think maybe my first 60 videos. I'm not sure, but I just recently got the ring light. Check the eyeballs. You'll be able to tell when I got it and when I didn't. Um, this Nikon camera, it was used. I picked it up for, for pennies uh, and it works great. I've been using it for years now. Um, like I said, I have used my cell phone more than once for these videos that you guys subscribe to and watch. And so don't spend money that you don't have. If you feel like you need it, by all means, buy what you need. Uh, use what you have. If you don't have a document camera and you want to do your handwriting, um, use your cell phone or an iPad and set it down on like a milk crate and then have the camera facing down and right underneath it. And now you have a document camera where you're recording it here, uh, the, the microphone's on here. Um, one of the things I failed to mention was sometimes I will wear a lapel mic and, and record the audio track separately, especially when I'm outside. But um, other than that, in addition to using the, the external recorder, which you can also use your, your phone for as well, um, they make lapel microphones that plug right into your phone. Uh, this is the the preferred microphone that I use. It's a Blue Yeti. Yeti is the microphone. Blue is the company. And they make snowballs for about 50 bucks, uh, 60 bucks. And then this is the, the more studio style microphone. But it is USB. It, it's almost plug and play. Um, it plugs into Chromebooks, no problem. PCs, Macs. Uh, and, and it gives really good quality of video of audio. And you also have adjustment knobs in the back as long as gain, as, long, as well as gain in the front. Uh, so this is what I'm using right now, and I, I highly recommend it, uh, but it's not the end-all be-all, and I did not have one of these when I first started doing, and my Logitech, my Logitech webcam that I used also has stereo microphones built into it. And that is what I used for my first several videos. Uh, probably my first 15, 20, maybe even 30 videos was just the built-in microphone on the webcam because it is a higher quality than what's typically built into a laptop or a desktop or a Chromebook. Um, but it may not be higher quality than your cell phone. So play around with it, see what you like, see what works for you. Uh, if you record your audio separately, you have to sync it up. And that's a little tricky sometimes, but we'll get into that when we start talking about editing videos in a future episode. Uh, just, just start creating some video. And if you need to make more than one or two or three takes where you mess up or something, uh, you know, remember you're trying to make about five minute videos if you're trying to show to the students. Uh, 10 minutes at the absolute max, but just go ahead and, and do it over again. Uh, most of the videos I do, I do one take 
And if I mess up, I'll cut, I'll edit the video right here and I'll, I'll cut it out here. And I'll take the mess up out and I'll just keep going. Um, I don't spend a lot of time going, doing it over and over and over again, but then I've got over 70 videos uploaded to YouTube. And so I have some experience with this. The biggest thing is to just do some, get used to trying to put you on video. You, you'll get better. You'll get more fluid. Uh, you'll, you'll have to, I don't do a script, but I do do a checklist most of the time on my videos. You'll figure out some tricks and I'm trying to make this series of videos to help you figure out those tricks faster, maybe give you some tips that you hadn't thought about. Um, but I hope this was helpful. I hope this gave you something to think about and be sure to click the subscribe button and the little bell next to it and you'll get notified every time I upload a video. I really appreciate your views. I do this because you guys keep coming back and that tells me you want more of this content. Go make some videos, S drop a link in the description below and let me see some of those videos and don't be embarrassed. Go back to my channel and check out my very first, I don't know, 10 videos. They're garbage compared to this. Uh, so don't be embarrassed. Everybody starts with, with lower quality and works to higher quality and I'm still working on that. By no means do I think I have a very good quality video, but I try and that's all anybody can ask. Until next time, thanks for watching.